Hi everyone and welcome back to my video series on coding with Flutter. In the previous video we have seen how to add unit tests to our Flutter apps and we said that unit tests are a good way to test the business logic in your code. Now today we are going to look at widget tests. And what is a widget test? It is a test that tests a single widget. So widgets perform various tasks such as rendering layout as well as responding to user actions and events and for this reason widget tests are more comprehensive than unit tests. So the goal with widget tests is to verify that the widget UI looks and interacts as expected. In this video I show you how to write widget tests and the first step is to show you how a widget test looks like. So we can open our IDE and the first thing we're going to do is to create a new Flutter project. Uh, we're just going to call this sample app and uh, leave everything else on the default settings. So what this will do will create the Flutter project and download all the dependencies that are required. And the reason I'm doing this is that I want to actually show you just with the Flutter sample uh, app that comes bundled when you create a new project. And this is just a template for when you create a new Flutter app. So we're just going to run it quickly just as a reminder. And the example in here essentially is just a counter that can be incremented by pressing on a button. And this will do well for us as an example in terms of uh, understanding how widget tests work. In fact, uh, we can notice that in the test folder over here, there is already a widget test.dart file. And this is what we will be uh, studying uh, for now, just so that we can understand what a widget test looks like. And here we go. This is the Flutter example application that you've probably seen many times. Okay, so let's take a look at this widget test file that we have here. Uh, we have to define a main method and inside here we make a call to this test widget function. This is going to take a parameter which is a description and then it takes a function which takes a widget tested parameter. And so every time you want to write a test, this is what you have to do. Uh, call widget test widgets with a description and this um, syntax over here. The first line in the test is uh, this tester.pump widget and this is what we use to load a widget for testing. So in this case, this is the my app uh, widget, which is the root widget in our application and that would be defined um, over here um, at the top. And then we can see some expectations. So here uh, we are using find, which is a global object that is accessible in the test environment. And we use this to find a widget by text. So we are trying to look for the zero text in here, which is also uh, what we are rendering um, in the app over here. Then we use a second parameter, which is called finds one widget. And this is called a matcher and it it is used to match the result of the expression on the left. So in this case, we have an expectation and we are using it to verify that there is exactly one widget uh, with the text zero. Similarly, the next line is used to verify that there are no widgets with the text one. And this is exactly what we would expect to see when we start the app over here. Okay, so the next line here um, tries to tap a button which is identified by a specific icon. So the tester.tap um, call is what we want to use to send tap events to buttons in the app. After that there is a line called tester.pump. This is what we use to force the application to draw a new frame. In practice this is used to force a rebuild of our widget. So the important thing to remember here is that when you call pump the build method in our widget is called. So every time you call pump on a widget that is under test, then this uh, implies that the build method will be called. Now, what will happen in this demo app is that when we tap on the add button, then the text label increments from zero to one. And one way to verify this in our widget test is to say that we are going to find zero uh, widgets with the text zero 
and we expect to find one widget which has the text one. So if we try to run our test over here, we should be able to verify that it works as intended and the test passes. Um, so this is exactly what just happened here. Now, one thing I want to point out is that we just want to see what would happen, for example, if I did not have the pump method in here. And if you remember what I said before was that when we call pump, we are guaranteed that the widget, that the widget gets rebuilt. And what we see here is that the test is now failed. And um, that's because the expectation over here have not been met. So what's going on here? So the problem is that when we tap on the button, uh, which is used to increment the value uh, of our counter, uh, inside this method over here, we call set state, and inside set state, we increment the counter. Now this counter variable is what is being used to um, show the value inside the text here. So one thing that is important to understand about widget tests is that just because tapping a button might uh, trigger a call which ends up calling set state, um, this doesn't by itself mean that the build method is going to be called. And so this means that unless we call tester.pump, then the widget tree is not going to be rebuilt. So keep this in mind when you write your widget test because very often you might get failing uh, expectations and that's because you have forgotten to call tester.pump. So this is very important. Okay, so this is an overview of how to write um, a simple widget test. And uh, now we should understand a little bit better how widget tests work. And one thing that I want to point out is that the focus here is on the UI and we only express the cases that we need to test uh, by interacting with UI elements and writing some expectations on the state of the UI. And this is something that is very different from unit tests. It is harder to write a widget test than it is to write a unit test, but it gives us confidence that the UI works as intended. Okay, so what we are going to do next is to write some tests for the login page in the Firebase authentication demo that I've covered in the previous videos. So um, I'll be doing some live coding. So if you want to follow along, um, you can head to the GitHub page for this project. And if you go on the releases page over here, and you should be able to see this unit test tag and you can download the corresponding code. And, and so you can start from here. Okay, so I think we're ready to open this project on the IDE and I have it uh, prepared um, just right here. And this is the unit test that we have written on the previous video. And we are now going to extend uh, this and, and start writing some um, widget tests for this application as well. Okay, so the application is now up and running over here. And as you might remember, we have an email and a password field and a login button that the user can tap to authenticate. This logic is all stored in this uh, login page, which we have um, now seen a number of times. And so what we want to do is to start writing some uh, widget tests around this logic and, and write some expectations. Okay, so we are now ready to create a new test file for our login page. And so what we're going to do, it will be to create a Dart file. We're going to call this login page test. And uh, inside here, we're going to now start writing the code for our test. So if you remember, the way we do this is we define a main class. And uh, if I borrow some of the example code from this um, template test class over here, I can just add it. And uh, I'm going to use this as a template for how to write my test. Um, test widget is something that is available through the Flutter test um, uh, package. So we need to remember to import that. And here we're going to be able to uh, start writing our first widget test. <clears throat> For now, I will just leave the description empty. And in fact, <clears throat> the first goal that we have here is just to be able to, to create a login page. So the way we're going to do that is to say login page page equals login page and we need to import the login page as well from our uh, application package 
and uh, this is um, a constructor that takes an on sign in uh, callback and this is what we use to uh, inform the parent widget that the user has signed in. So for now, we just leave this as an empty closure. Um, and then I will show you how we're going to use this in a second. Now, if you remember what we've done when we um, took a look at the sample uh, Flutter demo app, uh, in the widget test, we actually had some code um, to um, call the tester.pump widget. And here we could essentially just pass in the page. Um, now this is very minimal. We haven't even added any expectations yet, but we just want to see if this compiles and runs. Um, and we are going to write this test just step by step. So what happens when we uh, load this page and run it is that we get an error. And so if we inspect this, it tells us that it has not found a media query widget and scaffolds require a media query widget ancestor. So this is something that we had not experienced when we had originally looked at the sample widget test um, code. And uh, But the reason that this code was working and that our code is not working is that here we are actually trying to test the login page directly. However, this does not have a media query widget ancestor, and this is required because our login page has a scaffold in it. So in order to get around this, we are going to write a new helper method, and this is going to be called widget uh, make testable widget. And this is going to take a widget child and uh, in here, we are going to provide the functionality that we need in order to make the login page testable. So we need to remember to import material so that this symbol is defined. And here we're going to return material up, uh, which will take a home and we'll pass the child. What we are then going to do is to say that when we pump the widget, we are going to call this method make testable widget and we are passing the login page as a child. So let's see if that works. And this is now going to go green. And uh, if you remember, the error was complaining about media query. But when you create a material app inside, this will have uh, it will create its own media query object. So in practice, this is all you have to do in order to test your widgets. Uh, you just need to make sure that they are embedded from with a material app. So our test is now green and we are uh, ready to proceed. Now, before we go any further, I want to give you an overview about the tests that we are going to write. And I prepared this in the form of acceptance criteria. So let's just focus on the first one for now. So we want to be able to write a test that will satisfy this. So given that the email and password is empty, when the user taps on the login button, then we don't attempt to sign in with Firebase and the sign in callback is not called. So just by reading at this, we should get a sense for what things we might need to be able to check. We need certainly to be able to tap on the login button. Uh, and that's something that I will show you how to do. And then there is something about signing in with Firebase. Now, if you remember the login page itself uh, takes an authentication object, uh, which is um, exposed by an authentication provider. So. If you remember in some of my previous videos, I showed you how you can inject the dependencies that your uh, widgets might need by implementing your own inherited widget subclasses. And uh, for the purposes of this video, uh, because a login page only will work if it has an old provider with an old, then we should actually modify the testable widget um, helper method that we have created so that the test also has its own authentication provider. So the way we do that is going to wrap this with a new widget. And here we're going to say out and out provider. We need to obviously remember to import it. And this takes an out parameter. So when we run the application, um, so when we're not running the test, we want to actually pass out, which is this class 
that actually talks directly to Firebase. However, when we actually run the tests, we don't really want to call into any Firebase networking code. And instead, we want to supply what is called a mock. And that is an object that we are going to use to test whether um, the signing method is called or not. Okay, so we have determined that we want to write a mock for this authentication object over here. And let's just take a look at how this might look like. If you remember, the authentication class that we have uh, created implements this base auth, um, and this is an abstract class that defines all the methods that are needed to communicate with Firebase. So if we do create a mock class that implements base auth, then it, this is something that we can use in our test to verify whether these methods are called or not. So one way to, to do this essentially is to create a class called mock out and this could implement base out now in order for this class to implement base out we need to add the implementations for all the methods that are defined by uh, base out so in here we can choose to implement all the missing overrides and this uh, fills up this class with all the methods that are part of base out uh, we would obviously have to implement each one of these methods, but as far as our testing goes here, we should now be able to, to create a um, mock authentication and pass it to the auth provider. Uh, now this mock authentication object, for example, might give us a flag that we could call did uh, attempt sign in. And uh, we could try, for example, to set this to true when uh, signing with email and password method is called. So in order for us to verify whether this is called, uh, we are actually also going to say that initially this will be false. And in order to, to verify this, we somehow needs to, need to ensure that the test itself has access to this mock object. So the way we are going to do this is to actually pass the authentication object here using the abstract class and we are going to give it to the authentication provider then when we create our test we need to ensure that we create a mock out object like so and then this is something that we can now pass to um, the make testable widget helper so somewhere in here we will be writing the code to expect uh, for example, that uh, sign in with email and password is called or not. And in order to verify that, we will be able to say something like expect that this dot did attempt sign in is uh, true or false. So this is just the outline of how we, mo we might go about mocking objects with this technique. Now, one thing that I would like to point out here is that for the purposes of the tests that we are actually writing right now, we only care about the signing with email and password method. And um, if we want to implement a mock that uh, conforms to the interface in base authentication, we actually had to implement four of these methods, one for each uh, method in base auth. And this is actually more work that we, we really want or need to do. And um, because we are creating a mock authentication object here manually, this is what we have to do. However, what I'm going to suggest uh, going forward is that actually we're going to use um, a third party library, which makes it, which makes mocking a lot easier um, in Dart. And that library is called Mokito. So if we actually open up the browser and go to pub.dartline.org, we can search for the package Mokito uh, in here. And uh, here we find the latest version that we can go and install. Uh, so going forward uh, on this video, we will be using Mokito and we will not uh, go ahead with this technique of implementing mocks manually. And this is something that I found brings a lot of convenience and helps you write your tests uh, in an easier way and they can also be more configurable. So 
in order to use Mokito, we need to go to the pubspec uh, .yaml file, and we need to identify the Flutter test uh, dev dependency. And here we need to add the latest version of Mokito. So let's try to install this and see what happens. Now, I have tested this before and it appears that at the moment, if I try to use the latest version of Mokito alongside with the current Flutter SDK, there is a dependency conflict and so they don't really play nice with each other. So for the time being, I worked out that the version that works best is 2.2.3. And uh, in order to get this working, I'm actually going to flutter, clean the project, and then I'm going to get the packages again. And this time, hopefully, we should be able to, to get a successful installation for the Mokito package. So this is just a note for now. It might be that in the future, Mokito will work well with version 3 for your projects. And when that's the case, feel free to use that. But for now, I'm using 2.2.3. OK, so let's see now what happens. I'm going to import a package called Mokito. And this is what we're going to be using. And I'm going to completely delete this implementation of the test class. Instead, I'm going to say that the mock alt class extends mock and implements base out. And this is all that we need to do in order to define a mock with Mokito. And in a second, we are going to see how this is then used in the code. OK, so now that we have installed Mokito, we are ready to go ahead and continue writing our first widget test. Um, I'm going to delete these two lines for now. And I just wanted to open up again the acceptance criteria that we were looking at so that we know what we need to write. Um, so the test was that given the email or password is empty and the user taps on the login button, we don't attempt to sign in with Firebase and the sign in callback is not called. So there are two expectations that we are going to write and we also need to be able to uh, tap on the login button. So let's go back to the code and let's see how we might go about, um, first of all, let, let's add the description. So here we could say email or password is empty. Uh, and in this case, does not sign in. What we then want to do uh, is to try to tap on the login button. So what we could say is uh, await tester dot tap. And we are going to say find and somehow we need to get access to the uh, login button. Now we could do that by uh, finding by text because this is this login is what we use in the in the button itself. However, I find that this is a bit um, unreliable and can make your tests a bit flaky, especially if you later on decide to change the name of the button. For example, you could name it sign in and then suddenly this will make your tests fail because they can no longer find uh, the all the text. So I think a best practice for a widget test is that instead of relying on the names of the texts, uh, one thing that we could do is to add a key. So the way we do that is that for now, we need to find the button that has the login text in it. And in here, we're going to add a key and we're going to call this sign in. Now, this key is not visible to the user, but it works as a reference for us so that in our test, we can actually say find by key. And here we can specify the same key. OK, so now that we determine how to uh, trigger a press of the sign in button, we are we are ready to write our own expectations. Uh, just quickly, let me rename this to mock out um, because I think it's more descriptive. And uh, we need to be able to write something like mock old dot sign in with email and password. Uh, for now, let me just leave these two filters empty. And what we want to do is have a, a way to verify that this method is not called. Now, the reason why we expect this method to not be called is that in the login page, we have a condition uh, for validation, which says that 
if the form does validate, then uh, this will return true and we can proceed and sign in with email and password. But in this case, we are testing that the email and password are empty. And so we would expect the validate and save method to return false. And so none of this code would be executed. So what we want to test here is that this method is basically never called. And in Mokito, the way we do this is with a, a method called verify never. And we can add this in here. Okay, so I think we could try to, to run this test and see what happens. So we created the mock, we pumped it into our widget and it looks like it's actually, it's actually succeeding. So this is all good, but if you remember our acceptance criteria, we actually had two expectations. One, that we don't ask them to sign in with Sybase and we have just checked this one, but also that the signing callback is not called. So we also want to, in, to make that additional check and the way we can do it is to say bool did sign in equals false. And one way to check that the callback is called is to here say that did sign in is true. And in this case, all we had to do is to write an expectation saying that did sign in is false. So with this, we should be able to run the test again and see if it's still passing. And, and so it's now running and we can see that with this additional check, the callback is not called and in fact, the sign in is still false. So we are all good. Okay, so we have been able to write our first widget test with Mokito and now we want to try and, and write the other two as well. And just as a reminder, let's take out the second one. It says, given that the email and password are both not empty and they do match an account on Firebase, when the user taps on the login button, we attempt to sign in with Firebase and the sign in callback is called. So in addition to the previous test, we now need to be able to enter some text into the email and password and, and, and then write some expectations around this case. So um, just, just give us a little bit more space and write a second test, which we are going to call test widgets. And in this case, we're going to say non empty email and password and in this case we are going to expect that um, we have for example a valid account and that we call sign in and succeed uh, we also as usual need to specify a widget tester tester and this is going to give us an async method and in here we need to write the code for our test. Now we are just going to reuse a lot of the coding here and just add the additional bits that we need for this specific case. And specifically what we want to do is to be able to enter some text into the email and password fields. So let's see how we might do that. We are now going to write something new. So I'm going to say finder email field is find by key and this time we want to specify a key which is going to be called email and uh, and then we want to very find a way to write some text into this email field so we would write a wait um, tester dot enter text into the email field and we will write for example email and uh, so the finder object uh, returns this field if it finds one and then we can use this to enter some text in it similarly we could do exactly the same thing for the password so we're going to define a password field uh, which will be defined by key uh, so we'll specify a key of password and we enter for example the text password in it um, so one thing that we need to remember to do is that the widgets that represent the email and password fields in the code itself need to have the same keys that we have specified here. So if we head back to the login page, 
and we find the uh, email and password fields here we need to remember to specify a key which is going to be key with email and the same thing for the password over here so that our widget test can find the fields that it needs um, we are also going to have to change our expectation uh, copy paste error here so here we are going to expect that mock authentication dot signing with email and password it is called and we can expect the arguments that it takes so we are actually going to say email and password and this verify never close here is not correct anymore so we actually want to verify that this method with these parameters is actually called and the way to do that is to say called with one so it is only called once okay so the other thing that we want to remember to do is to now expect that the did signing method um, callback here is, is called so this is what we would now expect so if we try to run this um, test again uh, we can see what happens and uh, so we enter the email and password we tap on the signing button we verify that signing is called and it looks like everything has gone to plan now even though our test has passed uh, if we inspect the console log here we see a message that says signing is null and the reason for that is that in the login page over here when we sign in with the username and password as long as the uh, method doesn't throw an error then the next line is going to print the user id now our mock class uh, doesn't actually really know what to do with the return value unless unless we specify uh, what return value to supply and so in this case it would just return null and that's why we see this over here but it is expected that when we sign in with email and password we either get a uid for the user or uh, the old object will throw an error so just to um, better reflect this in the test, we are also going to, to have a way to say that when we call this method over here with email and password, then we return a certain result. The way we do that is with a, a method called when, and the way we use it is that we put a invocation in the mock, and then we can say then return, and the return type of the signing method is a future of string. So in this case, we will return a future dot value. And then we would say, for example, UID. So this doesn't really change the outcome of the test. It will still pass in the same way that it was doing before. However, if we try to run it now, we should see that when it prints the output, it will print a UID which is exactly the value that we see here. So it's worth keeping this in mind when, when writing tests. Okay, so we're now ready to write the last test uh, that we are, were planning to do. And just as a quick summary, the idea here is that when the email and password are not empty and there isn't a matching account on Firebase, then we do attempt to sign in with Firebase, but the sign-in callback is not called. So in order to write this test, we are actually just going to copy paste this because it's going to be very similar. However, uh, the detail here is that when we call sign in, if we fail, and the difference is going to be that when the mock is called with sign in with email and password, then rather than returning a valid UID, we are going to say then throw an error. A way that we can quickly specify an error is to say state error, which is something that just takes uh, some text. So for example, invalid credentials. And then we had to modify our expectation. So for example, if we were to run the test like this, what would happen is that we try to sign in and then once the sign in with email and password is called, then here we're throwing an error, but the did signing um, boolean here was set to true from the previous test. So we would get a test failure saying that we expected uh, true and we got false. So what we actually need to do now is to update this value as well. 
and, and run the test again. And so the way we can summarize this is that we are entering an email and password. We are tapping on the signing button. The mock is going to be called exactly once with this email and password. And here we are telling the mock to throw an error that says invalid credentials. And because of this, the on signing callback is actually not called. And so we expect that this did signing value is still false. And just to confirm that, this is what happens in this method in the login page. So we have a try block and if for any reason, if an exception is thrown, then we just print that. But we are actually not calling the on signing uh, callback. Okay, so we have covered a lot of material today. <laughs> I've given you an overview about widget tests and what they are used for. We have seen a sample uh, widget test uh, from the default uh, Flutter demo application, and we introduced some new concepts, so such as the widget tester, uh, the find object, and the matcher objects. We have talked about how to trigger UI events and the importance of tester.pump. We then took a deep dive into our Firebase authentication demo and we have seen how to write widget tests for our login page. We have clarified that if a widget contains a scaffold, then it needs to have an ancestor material app. And because our specific login page requires access to an auth provider, we have added this as well. We have talked about test mocks and how we could go about writing a manual mock for our base auth class. And we have said that there is a better way, and that is to use the Mokito library. We have installed that library, and we have used it to verify that certain methods are called. We have also seen how to return values uh, or throw errors um, when certain methods are called in our mocks. I have suggested that we can use keys for the widgets that we intend to access from our tests. And overall, we have seen that Mokito is a very powerful library that works very well with widget tests in Flutter. In some of the previous videos, I've talked about the importance of making your code testable. And because we have spent some effort ensuring that our login page is testable, we didn't really need to change almost anything on the login page in order to write our widget tests over here. So this video concludes my overview of widget tests and Mokito. However, we have only scratched the surface for what Mokito can do. So I encourage you to check out the documentation for Mokito and see how you can use it in your own projects. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next videos.